there is a storied and deep relationship with beer in Germany. I don't think any reasonable person would have envisioned what's happened to Bend or what's happened in craft beer. And it really took off, and I think as craft beer has really risen to the top as something we all travel for, I think it was a key timing. I want you to walk away with a better understanding of Berlin and craft beer and how they're related. In Germany, it's just sort of an is. And that's a little esoteric, perhaps, but beer is. Berlin is, um, is very multicultural. It's uh, very vibrant. So then I realized, not only did I feel that this site itself, the exact physical property was perfect, the city of Berlin just had that right undercurrent. We're sitting in the Stone Brewing World Bistro and Gardens, Berlin. In Berlin, and in, in a lot of Germany, people do not have even anywhere close to the relationship with beer that we, are, we now take for granted in the United States. It was a pretty awesome beer scene in the U.S. 20 years ago. But if we went back, say, 35 years in that realm in the U.S., we would say, arguably, that the U.S. beer scene was deservedly the laughingstock of the world. Really, I mean, the world made fun of American beer, understandably. Today, the world really recognizes the creativity, the character, and just the complete diversity and the availability of amazing beer in the United States. Bend was very much a blue collar, kind of, you know, Bud Light, if you will, town, and getting them to become interested in something more flavorful, something a little different, that they weren't used to uh, is always going to be an uphill battle. We began business June 27th, 1988. Yeah, the first brewery ever in Bend. We were trying to open what amounted to a small restaurant in a town that had a cool outdoor recreation vibe. And, and we thought that it had a future. It was very tough to win customers at that point in time. We were very much a novelty, and not a lot of people were taking us very seriously. Berlin is to the rest of Germany the way that Austin is to the rest of Texas. I'm the first person in Berlin to do craft beer tours. I've been doing it for four years talk a little bit about German history and German culture and how that's actually affected how beer is being produced. And if you learn that during the tour, you start to appreciate the beer more and you start to appreciate Berlin more. It's not just about tasting the beer, it's about understanding the culture that that beer is created in. I'm very happy with this beer. It's one of the I have back at home in the UK. <laughs> Our only real export is tourism. We fashioned a certain part of our business model originally after the beer cultures in Europe. The program's really there for craft beer connoisseurs. It was born on a chairlift. So it's got this really cool story back in 2010, riding a chairlift, talking about some of those differentiating characteristics of Ben versus other communities. And obviously one of those was craft beer. When you look at the data, most people, I think it's over 50% of people, visit a brewery. Launching programs like the Bend Ale Trail have been the signature program for Visit Bend in terms of diversifying tourism offerings and keeping Bend relevant as a tourism destination. And we have a couple of fermenters, so here basically we can do whatever we want. I found it very eye-opening when I spent one year from 1996 to 1997 in, in Portland, Oregon, and seeing the brewing scene that was kind of like the first peak of craft brewing. And um, I worked at a brewery in, in Lake Oswego at, at Saxa Brewing, and uh, everything there, the McMenamin brew pubs and, and uh, the Schutz Brewery and, and Portland Brewing, Bridgeport, that was pretty eye-opening to me at that time. I think if we would have had 
those purity laws here, Reinheitsgebot, craft beer would not have developed the way it did. The Reinheitsgebot being this 700-year-old uh, law that's actually 502 years on the books, but it goes back even farther, 200 years from Bavaria. And this law more or less states that if you brew a beer in Germany, you can't call it a beer or categorize it as a beer if you use any ingredients besides water, hops, barley or wheat, and yeast. Now, the Europeans are borrowing lessons from American craft beer. And so now it's going both ways, and those ideas and that creativity is feeding each other. Honestly, like I can't keep up, but I want to say the last number I heard was 24, and there's now 18 on the new ale trail. So right there, you beat the number of uh, breweries that Berlin has, handily. From time to time I get flack because people think I'm dissing on Germany. No, 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 no. It exists, but it's too damn hard to find. And that is why most craft brewers are moving here as opposed to anywhere else at the moment. This area has got a population that is willing to engage with the things that they're trying to do, things that might fall outside of this Reinheitsgebot that I mentioned earlier, and that is, you know, why it's kind of a cradle for craft beer at the moment. Brewers all over the world are the same. They all love to drink beer and they all want to learn. As I will jokingly and lovingly say, you know, I, the secret about the Germans they're just like us.